Today we've got three vintage Christmas DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. So I'm going to start off with the first project. It is going to be some framed, a framed bag. We're going to use some wood tint, some paper towels, a chip brush, or whatever type of brush you like to use with your stains or tints. I'm going to use a thrifted 12 by 12 frame. Just going to pop the back out. It doesn't have any glass in it. This is a Michaels bag. And I'm going to be cutting Santa out. He's so cute. I love this vintage look for this little Santa. His little sweet face. Now I'm going to try to cut off as much as that green as I can. So I'm going to try to get as close to the red as possible. Because I don't want to have any of that left on there. And this is how it looks. Okay, so you can see the difference. If you put a white paper behind it, you see how much whiter that looks? And then, see there? So I want, it, I want it to have a white backing instead of having it against cardboard because that'll make it look more dull. I'm going to use my glue stick. You can use any type that you like, any brand, and just go over this entire bag. The bag is like a fabric mesh on the back. It's kind of a strange texture. So once I get it down, I'm going to take my little tool that came from plaid and I'm going to press this all down just gonna see where the bottom is flip it over and cut that off and then I'm going to fussy cut around Santa one more time to get a nice clean edge so that we have none of that white showing its only purpose is to brighten up the background now from Dollar Tree you can get some of these pieces of wallpaper, wallpaper panel, whatever they call it. I'm going to put my backing back there again so I can get an idea of how much I want to use. And just using some clips, I'm holding it in place while I cut off the excess on the bottom. It doesn't have to be the exact size of the backing because Santa is going to be covering that up. Now on these pages, you fold it over and peel the back off. Just that first strip is how I start. Then I try to get my strip right on top of the surface and press it down carefully so that I know that I don't have any crooked lines. Just making sure there's no bubbles. And then you're gonna peel a little bit up from the back, flip it back over. And then I like to use a wooden ruler because it won't cut your, your wallpaper there and just Kind of shimmy it back and forth, back and forth, all along that as you slowly peel the back end off and lay the adhesive side down. And it's going to give you a nice smooth finish. Just like that. And then we're going to put Santa right on top of it. I like that Santa has the little wood paneled background. I think that looks really cute. I'm going to use some of my Mod Podge. Thank you, Plaid, for sending me so many goodies. I am an ambassador, so I get to try out all kinds of items from them. I'm going to use my brush and go all the way to the edges and neatly in pretty much one layer. Cover it all up, and then we're going to lay it down, line it up, and press it down. I'm going to hold on to it so it won't slide anywhere. And then just work the bubbles out. And if you have any spots that aren't stuck all the way down, just go back in there, like his mustache and the edge of his coat, and just lay that down. So far, so good. We're going to put Santa aside and let him dry. I'm going to pull the tabs out of the back, and we're going to work on the frame. This is just raw wood, and I'm going to use some of this gray tint, again, from Plaid. It's a folk art product. I love these. These do not smell like stain. They dry very fast. They're like a water base and uh, fairly easy to clean up. Now the darker colors will, will stain, so you have to be careful and protect your surface, which is what I have done here. And then you're just going to go all the way around. Be sure you get the inside of the frame and all those surfaces. Then you're going to grab up a wad of paper towels or an old rag and just start rubbing off every bit of the excess on the inside, on the sides and on the flat surfaces. So after it's dried and Santa is dry, I'm gonna put him back down in the frame. I'm gonna use some of this tacky glue and just go here and there in like a dotted line. And then I'm going to go in 
in between those lines with some lines of hot glue. So it'll stick down quickly and then it'll stick down for longer. Just like that. You can just use hot glue if you want to here, however you want to do it. Then I'm just going to use some lightweight wood blocks here just to hold it down to make sure that nothing comes up. I'm going to give it some time to dry. And then once it's all dry, this is how Santa in the frame looks. Now it's time to embellish. So I made this string of beads on a Valentine's product um, project last year in 2020. And I took it off and I'm using it again this year in the Christmas. And I like it. This is a little thrifted bobble. It's like an ornament of some type, and it has a hole in the top. I'm going to take a little white piece of pipe cleaner, loop it around my little beaded piece up there, add some hot glue into the hole, and then I'm just going to place those two pieces of pipe cleaner right down in there, and it fits perfectly. And to embellish that, we're going to use just a little piece of pick that came off of something else. I'm going to cut it into two little pieces and make sort of a garland for the top of it. I'm going to put it right there on that loop and then give it a minute to dry. And I think I want to add a little bow to it. So I'm just using some of this gingham red and white uh, thrifted ribbon that I have. And I'm going to pull this down to make it really tiny. Then I'm going to trim little edges at a slant. Put it right there over my greenery. So I wanted to add one more thing on here and I had a snowflake left from my light up snowflake swag which you definitely need to watch that if you haven't seen it yet and I'm just gonna add it right there and I think it gives a perfect little finish. What do you think about this project? Isn't he sweet? I think it's perfectly vintage and rustic. Then you can just put whatever type of hanger on the back you want. Moving on to the next project, we're going to work on this beautiful yardstick swag. I won't be using a yardstick though, you'll see what I use. So I'm going to use some long deco mesh, some shorter deco mesh. I'm going to use white and red. I'm going to be using, I don't use that silver that's to the side. I've got some bottle brush trees from Dollar Tree. I've got some Dollar General, Dollar Tree, and thrifted ribbon. I've got some of these little ornaments that all came from Goodwill. Aren't they sweet? And then this one. And here's a Santa that I got at the thrift store, but you can get them similar. I think he has glasses at Dollar Tree. And then here's the little pick. This is a stake that came off of some type of a yard stake that I had. It is about 24 inches long, 20, 24 inches, something like that. And we're gonna use some pipe cleaners. This is how we're gonna attach our deco mesh to the stick. So you're just going to wrap one around the top, it's about an inch down, tightly, and then a little dot of hot glue so it doesn't slip on you. Then we're going to go down four or five inches, depending on what you want to do, and we're going to wrap one to each side. So wrap it in the middle and press one off to the side. And we're going to do the same thing right over the top or right under or above it and go right to the side. We're going to go down the same amount of distance, one in the middle, a little bit of glue to hold these down. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, you certainly can to show me some love. The link is in the description box below. We're going to continue all the way down just like this until we get to the bottom and on the bottom we're going to do two pieces and then you'll be a little space there. Be sure that you get your hot glue on the bottom one for certain, or it will fall off when you try to make your loop on the end. And you'll see what I mean when I start adding on my deco mesh. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I'm going to take all the little hangers off of my ornaments also. Should have mentioned that earlier, but there we go. Okay, so I'm going to start with this very wide deco mesh. I think it's a 20 inch. I'm just going to kind of gather it into my hand. This is a scrap that I got from the thrift store and it is, um, I knew that it wouldn't be enough to do too much with, but it's perfect for these swags. Good for scraps. I'm just going to place it down and wrap it around. 
just like that. I'm going to go down, make a little poof, kind of tucking my edges under. See the little poof there? We're going to take a little ruler until you can learn how to eyeball this. And we're going to do 10 inch poofs. So there we go. It's going to go to the outside. Just going to push it down into the center and then twist it. You can use your finger or your knuckles or whatever to hold it in place. Because deco mesh can kind of be frustrating and unruly, especially when you use the big spools like this. It gets kind of crazy and it catches on all of the pipe cleaners and drags across your table. It's just potentially a big mess. Going down another 10 inches and we're going to go back to the center. Poof it up. Put it in the center. Okay. We're going to go to the side again. We're going to work all on one side and then after we go to the bottom, We'll loop back up and start on the other side. So there we are in the middle. And then back to the outside. All right. The bottom, same thing, 10 inch poof, but you're just gonna loop it around and put it right in the one on the other side. 10 inch poof to the center. It's gonna overlap the other one you have there. Give lots of volume. 10 inch loop on the side. Make another one. There we go, all the way around until you get back where you started from. I'm just kind of adjusting here. I tucked my tail up too much. It gets really wound tightly when it gets next to the spool. So I'm just showing you how I pull that out. Kind of fluff it around and make sure that it's tucked in. And then wrap it around right there. Okay, so now we're going to add the red, and this is our Dollar Tree mesh. I think it's 8 inches, maybe 8 inches. All right, going to tuck that inside toward the middle, just like we did with the white one, so that it's not sticking up on the outside. It'll all be hidden under the little poofs. And we're going to do the same process here. We're going to take about 10 inches. We're going to start on the side, whichever side you want. This time I'm starting on the right. Before I did the left, it makes no difference one way or the other. Make your poof. Find your center point, which is what I'm doing now, and it gets difficult once it starts getting kind of um, fluffy here. It, it gets kind of uh, challenging, but you just keep going. You can find them. If, you, if it would help you to use a different color like the red and white pipe cleaner so that you can find it easily, go ahead and do it that way. Whatever works for you because you won't see those pipe cleaners in the end. So I'm going to keep going around. Same process. Go to the side, go over to the center, go back to the side, go over to the center until you are at the bottom, wherein you will make a loop just like we did before. I didn't want to edit this all out because I feel like some people need a little more visual. So that's what I'm giving you here. So we're looping it across the bottom just like we did before and going into the other side. Just like that. Continue along and it makes a beautiful slightly crisscross pattern. Um, it's not as noticeable once you get all of your little elements onto here but I think it's a pretty look. We're back at the top and it took almost one whole roll of the Dollar Tree deco mesh. You can change your mesh colors depending on what you have, depending on what kind of decorations you want to put on it. But I really like the idea of using that bluish green color and red and white for my vintage uh, projects. And I'm just fluffing it out, moving that around where I want it. Now we're going to take this beautiful ribbon, which was the inspiration for the projects and the coloring, and we're going to do 10 inch pieces. We're going to do nine of the Santas and dovetail them. We're going to do nine of the Dollar Tree ribbon and dovetail them. And then I have a red one that I got too from the thrift store and dovetail those. We're going to, last minute, I decided to use this because I hadn't used it yet. I'm cutting these into 10 inch pieces and rolling them up. You can see the little pink clip. That's where I just rolled it up like a little burrito and clamped it off over there. And they'll go on top of our little bundles. So let's start our ribbon bundles now. I'm going to use my widest on the bottom. Then the next one, 
And then right over the top, I'm going to use my beautiful Santa ribbon. I'm going to take one of these little rolls and put it right in the center. And then I'm going to bunch these toward the center. I'm going to pinch them and press them toward the center. And there we have our ribbon bundle. And starting in the top, I'm going right up here to those pipe cleaners and wrap it around. Very pretty. Now, I use 10 inch pieces. You are certainly welcome to use 12 inch pieces of ribbon strips if you would like. They will stand out more because these, um, because they're 10 inches, they will kind of fall down into the, the arrangement itself. They will kind of be pushed in. You can still definitely see them. You'll see that in the end. Um, you can definitely see them, but if you like more of your ribbon to show, do a couple of more inches on each little strip and you'll get a bigger punch of your ribbons. So you can see here, I'm pressing it down. And don't worry about smashing your loops and all of that because every bit of this is wired ribbon and it can be pulled right back up. And Deco Mesh is very forgiving. You can push that around and tuck it under. You, you really have a lot of um, leeway with that. Back to the center. You can see here, we're gonna cross them over. Add that little roll straight onto the top. I couldn't think of a thing in the world to make with that little snowy looking red stuff. Have y'all used it? Have you used any of that? I think it looks great in a ribbon bundle like this, but I really don't know what else I would use it for. So I did use um, all of it in this project. So that's good. I didn't waste any money and that always makes me feel better at the end of a project. So we're gonna continue along until they're all done. And then this is what it will look like when you get all of your bundles in. And then you just wanna be sure that you go up and fluff all of those out. Make sure that none of your corners are folded over or squished. You want a good representation of each color. Follow me on my social media. Love to see you there. So that's what I'm doing here. Just moving them all out, moving my little rolls around and then tuck down all of your little pipe cleaners. Press them back down into the frame like I'm doing here or you can cut them off, whichever one you prefer to do. I found it's easier just to leave them there and tuck them in the back in case I want to go back, you know, as an afterthought and add something to it. I still have it there. Those look so nice and the colors are so pretty together. And there you go. You just flip things out, press them under. Pretty easy to do. Okay, so I have widened up the view a bit so you can see it a little bit better. Then we're going to start by adding our little ornaments. I'm going to put Santa at the top and off to the side. I'm going to add my little trees in here. I do pull the bottoms off of those trees before I glue them down. I've cut a little hole in the back of Santa's hat behind the seam and put a pipe cleaner through it so that I can attach him to this piece. I'm going to put some hot glue on the little trees and just tuck those in here and there. You can use whatever type of ornaments you have, but I tried to find things that were vintage looking so that they would fit into the total aesthetic of this piece. And these are a little faded in spots. They're scratched in spots. Um, they are glass. And I just, I thought they were pretty. I love the shape of them in this arrangement. What do you think? It's not your typical round ornaments, so I like that they're different. And they almost look like the little bulbs for the Christmas lights, which is nice. Also a vintage thing, the little shapes of the lights like that. So I'm just poking them here and there. I didn't have very many of them, and I'm just trying to make sure that I have them kind of spaced out there where they should be, where you can see them well. I'm going to add my little boots in here. Just a little bit on the bottom, a little on the side. I do all of my wreaths and my swags laying down. A lot of people use a stand to hold them up. I just don't have one at this point, and that's why I don't do mine standing up. But, but when I do find one, because I'm going to get it thrifted, uh, of course, 
if I find one, then I'll start doing my videos for you where you can see me put them on standing up. That may be more helpful. Now, this beautiful ribbon, this is the only piece I had. I got it at the thrift store. Uh, loved it. So, I decided I'm going to cut it in half to really stretch it. So, I'm just going to roll it over in four inch pieces, like a four inch flip flop over there. And then I'm going to have two pieces on each side and I'm going to pinch it in the middle. This is not going to be the kind of bow that requires a lot of wire to hold it. It's going to be fine with one piece of wire down one side. And you'll see that when I get to the, uh, the end of the bow. It looks just fine. It works just fine. And if it wouldn't have worked when I tried to fluff it out, I would have just gone back and tried something else. Because I didn't use any glue on the bow, I could do that. I'm going to do this with the red. And unfortunately, my Santa did not have very much, so I had to work with just a tiny piece and I had to use a different bow on the top. The next time, I'll buy two rolls when I find a ribbon I really like. So this is all I had, so I'm just going to make a different type of bow just so I can use it in this project because I really, really enjoy looking at this ribbon. It's so cheery and bright and vintage. So I'm adding that on top and you can mix your bows too. I'm going to cut off what we don't need and um, start fluffing. And I'll start fluffing on the bottom and pull those sections out just on the bottom first and then I work my way upward. So that's enough, you know, that will stand out there on its own with just the two pieces of wire and, and I'm glad of that. It worked out, you never know. Crafting is experiment, partly. You just don't always know. I'm gonna dovetail the ends off the Santa ribbon there. And you can make a bigger bow. If you have more ribbon, you can make a bigger bow to go on your swag, whatever you choose to do. But I like this one, I think it's cute. Now we're gonna use the other half of that ribbon as a tail. So we're gonna dovetail it and I'm gonna cut a piece of that red also. It's gonna be shorter and I'm gonna dovetail that. Pipe cleaner in the middle is gonna hold it together and then I'm gonna add some glue on the back of the bow and I wanna leave my pipe cleaners out cause that's how we're gonna put it on the, the wreath. I'm gonna work down into a spot where I want it to be and then add that bow. Then I'm going to take the tails and kind of pull them over like they have a, just kind of giving them a little life, a little movement. Um, like they're going in and out of the fabric that's here. And I like that. I think that's cute. It gives a little interest. You can do that with your bow tails. Fix it however you like. Santa's beard is totally unruly. Then we're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to kind of let the red ribbon do its thing over there. And then we're going to add this little mouse right to the top, little sweet mouse. Okay, so now we're going to do a vintage wreath. Now it's vintage inspired because I've never seen a wreath like this before. I'm going to use two embroidery hoops here and a napkin that came from the thrift store, obviously, with beautiful poinsettias. We're using a 12 inch and an 8 inch for this project. We're also going to use some greenery that you haven't seen yet. So I'm going to lay it on top of here so I can get plenty of that pattern. I'm just trying to get it centered. And then I'm going to press the top on, screw it down. And when you flip it over, you can pull it a little bit to make sure that it's good and flat. It's very forgiving. And then I'm going to leave, leave about an inch so that I can fold and tuck on the inside and give it a nice clean edge. So I'm just leaving it like this, cutting all the way around in about a one inch border. I'm going to protect all of my fingers that may be touching this and I'm going to put glue around the inside and fold it and tuck it just like that. So that's what you see me doing here. I'm adding a line of glue and then folding over with my fingers and pressing this down into that glue line. I don't want to get any glue on the back of the napkin itself. I just don't want to have globs and stuff showing through. I'm just trying to keep it neat. And so you want to do this all the way around. 
If you have not subscribed to my channel already, I would love, love, love to have you here. I have a lot of fun. We always communicate in the comments section. And I am doing a countdown to 10,000 subscribers over on my Instagram. So be sure you follow me there. Okay, so you saw how we did that. Now I'm going to find how I want to place it. And then I'm going to add some hot glue to place it down. I'm kind of smearing that glue around so it will get a lot of coverage there. Then I'm going to flip it over. And to give it a little more support, I'm going to take one of these coffee stir sticks that I have in a big pack. And I think I, I think you know where I got it from. Goodwill. Anyway, we're going to add some glue and we're going to put the pick on the back. Sometimes I say thrift store and Goodwill so much that I almost forget when I'm going to say where something came from. I almost forget where it came from. It's weird. Mine does strange things. So here are some old picks that I got you know where from. I'm going to be cutting into sections. It looks like it originally came from Joann's, but the tag looks pretty old. Beautiful. It's just lightly frosted on the ends, um, just the way it would be in nature. Frosted on the ends, that would be up toward the sky, and then the layers underneath do not have as much on them. They're more green, and I love that look. I think it's very pretty. So this is given a little twist on vintage with adding some rustic to it. I'm going to use just my little wire on the paddle here and just twist these pieces, overlapping them so that the, the uh, greenery is on top of the one that is right before it. And then you can go back and add more pieces of wire where you need to. You can add a little hot glue where you need to just to make sure that your pieces stay down. I'm going to tuck in a few extra pieces here and there where I feel like it needs it. So there's one piece. And then there are a couple other spots that look like they could use a little extra help. I don't want any wire or any pieces to show underneath there. Now this one I'm just going to cross over so it's pointing in the opposite direction. I have a piece of mistletoe and I am going to pull this off of its little plastic piece and add it here and there. There's mistletoe in that pretty little napkin. There's also holly, but can you believe with all that I have thrifted, I have never thrifted a piece of holly. No holly and no holly berries. And I definitely need to get some. But you know, it's almost clearance time. We'll be getting all this stuff after the holidays. So to make my bow, I'm going to use the rest of that napkin and cut it into strips right over where the decorative pieces are, and then I'm going to make a little messy bow. So you just make an X for a messy bow. I'm just trying to decide what I want to go where. Crisscross them just like that, and I have a little piece of metallic cording, but you can use anything you want for this, jute or a piece of wire, whatever you want. I'm going to tie it tightly. Then I'm going to pinch it in the middle, kind of like you would with a tassel, to make sure that both sides are equal. I'm going to trim it off. You don't have to be precise with this. It's a messy bow for a reason. I want it to be messy. I want little pieces of thread coming off. I like it. I think it's pretty. Again, it makes it a little more rustic, which makes it fit better into my own home decor. So there we go. And I'm going to put it right on top of this right where that little screw is and then you can add hot glue if you want to or you can just cut it off like this and if you cut the little pieces of ribbon short enough they'll kind of you know stay where they need to stay because they're fairly light then you make any type of hanger that you want to put on the back and glue it down so these are our projects here is our framed Santa, and he is from a bag, so we recycled a Michael's shopping bag for that. And then we have lots of thrifted items and Dollar Tree items right there on our beautiful swag. Love the colors. Love, love the colors. And then over here, we have that pretty rustic doubled wreath. 
and I think it looks nice. What do you think of these projects? They're all vintage inspired. Which one would be your favorite? I have had so much fun doing all these Christmas projects and having so much commentary with you guys. I love talking to you guys and hearing your ideas. You always give me good ideas and options. I want to thank all of my subscribers who have been here from the beginning. If you're new here, I am so happy to have you. You should feel welcome. I have really great YouTube family here to welcome you with open arms. I am so glad that you stopped by today, and I will see you again real soon. Bye!